Okay. So hello everyone, and uh, you know we have Dr. Sara also now with us. Uh, you know it's a pleasure to you know be able to interact with all of you all today, and uh, you know we have a fun and interactive session lined up. So hope all of you all you know enjoy and you know also learn a lot about ergonomics uh, in the process. So let's start with a few uh, you know poll questions. You know we just want to understand you know the crowd that we are uh, interacting with today. So, uh, Anshik, if you can just put in the first poll question. Sure, then, sure. I'll, uh, I'll put so uh, all the questions will be there, uh, you know, they'll be there. Uh, all the questions would be there. Okay, great. So, I've launched the poll already. Now yeah. People, you know, they, you can actually start uh, answering the question. Okay. So, you can pin Dr. Sara now. So, uh, she can take over. Sure, sure. All right. And in the meantime, I want you all to, you know, just uh, fill out these questions so we come to know and we can accordingly, you know, uh, give you all a few feedback and, you know, tips to manage things. Over to you, Dr. Sara. Hi, everyone. Good morning. I hope you guys are doing well. So before we start talking about posture and ergonomics, it is very important for me uh, and Dr. Ashwini to understand that if you guys have ever heard that sitting is the new smoking. So I can see slowly and gradually you are voting. Okay. So I can see more people are saying that they already know it. Few people are still left to reply. Uh, yeah, very good, very good. As many of you uh, will be like, will be respond to it. You will understand whether it is actually the new smoking or it is not. Go on. I can actually see a lot of people, you know, working from home still. <laughs> but, yeah. but we we've been asked to you know uh, go to office now so at past year i'm here at my office only <laughs> all right so we are nearing the two minute mark after which we'll end the poll okay so here are the results so most of these people know it already yeah, we have a, a smart group today. I think things are going to be easy for us. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yes, uh, there are researches which says that sitting is the new smoking. And we, we have a presentation to show you all. Uh, let me take, let me open it. Um, please bear with me. You must have heard that doctors are quite bad when it comes to maths and technology. So please bear with me. Um, yeah. Um, till then I'll request you all, those who have not, uh, not replied to the poll yet and reply. Okay. Yeah, can you all see the PPT? Yes, we can. Perfect. All right. So they say that sitting is the new smoking and there are lots and lots of researches and more than researches, a lot of marketing uh, trend where they say that how sitting and smoking are, um, you know, same. Now let us understand why and how did they start this correlation? So when you smoke two to three cigarettes in a day, what it does to your lungs versus when you sit two to three hours in one stretch without taking a break on a chair, what it does to your spine. So the idea is your life expectancy reduces the same way the way smoking reduces your life expectancy. And the damage that few cigarettes does to your lungs 
is the similar kind of damage that continuous sitting does to your back. But again, let us ask ourselves whether sitting can be new smoking or not. Ideally, no. This came up as a study, which was a very weak study. Uh, it was done on a very few uh, number of subjects. The population was very small. The, the subject, uh, it was very subjective. Then they did uh, more researches and they found out that actually sitting is not uh, equivalent to smoking. And the most logical reason is that when it comes to smoking, you can quit it whenever you want. If you are not able to do it, you can take professional help to quit it. But when it comes to sitting, you can't. You just can't because sitting is a fundamental movement or a position for us. Whatsoever, if you are not able to sit, then this is a serious problem. Because starting from sitting, uh, sitting if we start from you know getting up from the bed. So first you sit while lying down to standing, first you sit then going your personal routine, going to washroom, then eating your food, sitting in office, all these movements are in sitting. Whereas smoking is something, there are so many people who do not smoke and it does not affect their lives, but sitting is something mandatory. So the newer research says that sitting is not equivalent to smoking. Now with this uh, myth burster, we have to understand that if it is not equivalent to smoking, and still, if sitting is causing aches and pain, that what, then what we can do? We can sit better, we can sit tall, and we can uh, examine that what exactly is happening due to which we are sitting is creating a problem. Why people who sit for longer hours get aches and pain? Now this uh, comes to the next question that how many of you have experienced aches and pains ever since you have got into sitting job? Um, can I see the poll questions again? I think a few people have already uh, responded to this question. How do I see it? Sure, sure, Dr. Zara. I'll just share, share um, the results with you. Yeah. So we have 93% who have said that uh, I have experienced pain. Hmm, that's a lot. So there are two people who have not blessed. Touch wood. <laughs> okay. So again, um, see, ever since you have got into sitting job, uh, you a lot of people have experienced aches and pain. And for those two who have not, not experienced, I'm very glad that uh, you have not. Uh, but if you think of people in your friends and family who have sitting job, they will often complain of aches and pains, maybe in the neck, shoulders, or lower back. The possible reason is we are static in one position and then it leads to pressure on our spine, on our disc, and eventually it worsens. It, it's like, you know, uh, if you press, like, you know, if you wear a watch and if your watch is very tight and you spend the whole day in heat, in sun, and when you come, come back home and you remove your watch, you can see discoloration. Even if you have removed the watch, you'll see the discoloration. Similarly, when you sit for longer hours, slowly and gradually, it starts affecting uh, your lifestyle. It starts affecting your spine and reduces the life expectancy. Even when you start walking, even when uh, you reduce the number of sitting hours. So even then people do feel that although I have, uh, you know, now I'm not working from home, I'm working from office, even though I have pain, uh, I had to sit a lot in my previous job, but my newer job is better. I, I'm on go, but still I have the pain. So it becomes a root cause of, um, you know, aches and pain. It's not just a current, it's not just an aggravating factor, but it also becomes the root cause of aches and pain. Okay, I'll see the poll questions again. Uh, results, I'd like to see the results again. Yeah. Now it says, how many of you are working from home and how many of you are working from office? Again, just one person is working from home. I hope you are uh, not taking this work from home because you're sick or you have somebody to take care. Uh, almost everyone is working from, uh, sorry, I just said the vice versa. Everyone is working from home, working from home, not office. Okay, so when you're working from home, what is the possible postures do you take? So I want you all to be still wherever you're sitting from wherever you are attending this meeting. Please don't move. 
just observe in which position are you sitting in okay where do you identify yourself are you sitting on a stool on a chair with both your legs bent are you sitting on maybe bed or floor with your legs stretched are you sitting on desk maybe lying down maybe on the couch or on the window pane anywhere right so where do you identify yourself and i want you to remember and be in the position in which you are without correcting and then see what is happening to your spine okay now see and identify analyze yourself so it it's it's not a lecture where i have to do all the talking it's rather a you know retrospection it's rather a, a self realization in which i want you all to see where do you stand and what is the scope of improvement if any right so for those who are sitting but sitting either slouched or sitting with hips out and back supported upper back maybe a few of you are sitting tall and upright there could be few people who are sitting but holding a phone laptop books maybe a pillow or anything else in the hand if not then laptop in the hand to attend the meeting then there could be people who are standing and attending it then the ones lying down so basically this table or this graph says what is the pressure on your back when you are in these positions so you can see that sitting the the uh, pressure on your disc when you're sitting is somewhere around 140 105 and 185 and when you slouch and you're holding things in your hand this is something which happens usually because we are either either holding our own laptop if we don't have a proper desk because we are working from home or we are holding our laptop cushion or anything else uh the mothers or the parents they even hold their kids while working from home right so this is the maximum pressure that goes on the spine and this is the very reason that why we start getting aches and pain because we sit a lot now going back to the previous slide for people who are working from office i think there's just one person working from office um so what happens even if you have a proper desk even if you have a laptop at a uh, height where you can see the screen properly and you don't have to slouch maybe you are not uh, taking use of the chair the way you should this actually works well also for the people who are working from home and they have a workstation so some people prefer uh, sitting on the dining table to work some people have a study table and a lot of people have changes have made changes at home in a way so that they sit properly correct so if you have a good sitting uh, you know workstation then make sure where do you stand if you are sitting without back support with your hips on the edge your laptop screen little lower then you are stressing your neck shoulder your lower back your wrist and i want you to understand that spine we say back right back is the most important part of our body like how do we say how do we say, uh, say to our friends or family who needs us how do we say we say don't worry i've got your back right how, where did this i got your back came from because this is how important our back our neck our uh, lower back is if it is all in place we can actually work on ourselves and achieve all the uh, goals that we want to okay unlike any other joint so spine plays a very important role and if anything happens to spine the problem slowly and gradually radiates to the shoulder elbow wrist similarly back pain can slowly and gradually develop into hip pain thigh pain knee pain ankle pain calf pain and for your surprise i want to tell you all that there are so many people who have bad knees they take treatment they do not get better and when we analyze we see actually the problem was not in the knee at all the problem was in the back again the spine and what could be the potential reason i used to sit a lot without taking break so here i want you all to analyze how do you sit okay so take full support of the back rest take full support of the arm rest take full support of the seat lift your laptop or your desktop up and then work see you have all the support here also you have all the support the only thing is we are not taking help of these support so please take all the privileges that you have heading forward okay now next question how many of you know that physiotherapy can help in relieving back pain or body pain without 
injections, medicines, and surgery. So let us see. 24 on 30. A lot of people. A lot of people know it. And 80%. Around 80% know it. And 20% uh, doesn't know it. Okay. Let's talk about the people who are in the 20% first. Since I have to address both of you. Um, so yes. Physiotherapy is not just about injury rehabilitation. It's not just about joints. It's, it's about everything. So during COVID, we realized that how physiotherapy can help you to increase your oxygen levels. We also uh, saw that how people who got very weak, very weak after the COVID infection, they got recovered, they are all fine. But they often complain that I've started developing forgetfulness. I have, I still feel weak. I still have pain in my joints. So these are the, you know, ill effects of the infection that just went. And these can get better with physiotherapy. I know a lot of boosters, a lot of um, medicines, a lot of supplements we take. And those are important. Those vitamins, those minerals, they are important. But there are people who still feel that something is left. And for that, Physiotherapy comes in the picture. Now, there's a difference between fitness level of exercises and therapeutic exercises. So whenever you have any aches and pain and the doctor tells you that, you know, you have to be physically active to get better. You have to be on your toes. You have to move a little more. Maybe you, you must have put on a lot of weight and, you know, that's stressing your back, knees or hips. So now here, the difference between fitness exercises and therapeutic exercises are, it draws a bridge. So here, when you are unwell and here, when you are all good to go to gym, but when you are unwell and you start gymming, then what happens is the recurrences of condition or the condition gets worse. So in order to bridge this gap, there is physiotherapy. When you do therapeutic exercises to get better, so you start with exercises to reduce your pain, to protect your uh, joints and muscles, then you reach to a level when you are able to take good intermediate of le uh, level of exercises. And when you reach to a level when you can actually do advanced level of exercises with your physiotherapist, that is the time you have to go to the gym. Similarly, there are conditions which are so bad that people have to go for surgeries. And they can be very serious if I tell you. There are people who complain that they can't control their urine. They have bladder and bowel problems. They can't feel their toes. They can't, uh, there's always a tingling or numbness kind of sensation in the arms or maybe in the hands or maybe in the legs, depending upon where the condition is. And that is the time when they are advised surgery. With just four to six weeks of physiotherapy, these conditions can also be reversed. And that is how surgery and medicine and injections can be, you know, uh, you can get rid of them. And it's not just about delaying a surgery. It's not just about uh, preventing intake of drugs, but it is also about a lot of financial and a lot of emotional burden that comes with medications, injections, and surgeries. Now imagine, like, just think of somebody who you know has undergone surgery. They must have spent lakhs and lakhs with the surgery. Then before and after care given by the caregivers, um, the whole, you know, the whole uh, concentration rotates and revolves around the person who is undergoing some kind of surgery. Now imagine that instead of that time and effort and money and emotion, if somebody starts taking physiotherapy at a very early age, so all those burdens are gone. Just 30 to 40 or 45 or even one hour of therapies can reverse all these burden. Okay, now... Um, we will see that how physiotherapy can work in other aspect other than uh, you know uh, surgeries, drugs, and medicine. So I would like to invite Dr. Ashwini, who's a senior and a very well experienced doctor. So Dr. Ashwini, please take over. Well, thank you for the introduction, Dr. Sara. Uh, so just you know to understand why you know uh, we are going through this uh, particular slide that how can physiotherapy help uh, you know to cope up with your work uh, related uh, issues so you know we are working from home or at office you know 
work related stress is something which you cannot avoid it's there you know however we try however the management tries there is some amount of work related stress so imagine being constantly in a stressed uh, situation or on top of that you know constantly adopting a very awkward posture which is going to end up straining your muscles as well so if you take few breaks and you know stretch out those muscles or move a little bit then those muscles get a break a breather you know they get some mobility so there is they are you know pulled out of that stressed position and if you you know are in a habit of practicing these breaks then you know you are able to you know prevent strains or any injuries to those tissues because of prolonged loading okay so like to give you an example of prolonged loading you know if you look at my finger okay if i do this there is nothing wrong in my finger okay i am feeling a stretch right now okay that's fine okay imagine your back okay you are sitting like this now imagine for 8 hours i'm going to keep my finger like this what do you think is going to happen after say 2 or 3 hours after some time i am going to feel some pain or discomfort okay and this discomfort is going to last until and unless i release that stress now is there any injury or any thing has happened with my finger no you know my finger is perfectly fine but what has changed then what has given me this pain it's the posture it's the stress of being in an awkward position for a long time okay so that is the stress which is given rise to this discomfort and pain all right so going to the next point how does it improve productivity you know if you take care of your posture you know with certain things that we'll be telling you about uh, you know if you do few movements uh, again we are going to cover that uh, in the presentation which will you know help to stretch out these muscles when you move about you know even those muscles there is increased blood supply over there so even that nourishes those areas so you know if you are taking care this way you are avoiding aches and pains and when you are avoiding aches and pains you know you are naturally able to function better and you know your productivity is uh, improved okay so it's a no brainer how does it reduce work from home fatigue now as dr sara you know described in the slides you know we are working from home so you know we don't have the ideal ergonomic chair or the table or anything you know we are just you know lying down on the bed or you know on the sofa we may just you know we have we may have a bean bag in our houses just chilling you know just doing our work but you know not paying attention to our posture so again if you end up straining your tissues because of strain and because of you know any uh, absence of exercises the weakness and the strain is going to create a vicious cycle where you know because your muscles are weak they are not going to be able to uh, take up the load that you know they are supposed to take for you to manage your daily activity so that's what's going to build up the fatigue and if you do physiotherapy or, or if you do those exercises it helps to reduce that work fatigue office ergonomic question uh, corrections definitely you know when you approach uh, you know your physiotherapist and if it is a work related you know uh, joint uh, issue or a muscle issue the first thing that she would do is ask you to you know show her her your workstation you know she would ask you to either like if you are doing a tele uh, physiotherapy she would ask you okay show me your workstation you know sit and show me how it is and then she would give you some guidance there and then if it is a, a clinic which you would go to normally the physiotherapist would say okay ask somebody to click a picture and you know get it to the clinic next time so i'll guide you how it is so that's how physiotherapy would work and now uh, dr sara if you can change the slide and now we have the latest thing of virtual physiotherapy you know it it was born out of necessity during the pandemic but you know uh, because we wanted to reach our patients you know who are far and you know who, who couldn't come to our clinic because of the whole uh, covid situation so you know initially it was a necessity but then you know we started building up on this technology of you know virtual uh, telehealth uh, physiotherapy 
And we started thinking that, okay, we need some computer vision technologies to assist us in, you know, uh, making up for some of the issues or maybe drawbacks you might have with purely because of the virtual medium. And, you know, there are now, uh, because, you know, we have been in the situation for like two years or so, now there have been studies which have successfully proven that virtual physiotherapy is as effective as in-person treatment. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so enough of the talking. I think, you know, even uh, we should practice what we preach, right? So you have been sitting for quite some time now. So let's take a break and let's do a few movements. Uh, these movements, uh, we will be sharing you the handouts for the same, so you can keep it as a reference even after the webinar. Uh, so Dr. Sara will be showing you the movements and I would be taking a quick watch on all of y'all. So may I request all of y'all to please switch on your video so I can keep a track on how you're doing those movements. Over to you, Dr. Sara. Thank you. So uh, to, if, to all the participants who are here, please don't feel like it's a school and you have been asked to switch on the cameras. <laughs> uh, rather see it positively, please switch on, all, uh, switch on your videos so that uh, me and Dr. Ashwini can see whether you're doing the exercises properly or not, because once the meeting is over, you will be able to do these. And when you will do this, you will see a change. Now think of the consequences versus doing it. So doing uh, these ergo breaks or ergonomic exercises on your desk itself can prevent you from aches and pains, conditions, which can be so severe that it leads to surgery. But you can reverse all those things with just five power exercises. So let's begin with our neck, okay? So if we talk about the neck, so whenever we are working in front of the computer or phone, we have a tendency to lean forward and poke our chin out, right? So when the chin is out, like here, so when your chin is out, then it stresses your neck a lot. The whole weight of your head goes on these muscles and these muscles. As a result, you start getting aches and pains. So this can be quickly reversed by sitting tall and taking the chin in and then relax. Okay, so let's do it. So take the chin in, then relax. You can even use your hand, take the chin in and then relax. Okay, please mind your neck. So you don't have to take your head up. You don't have to take it down. Rather, you have to tuck the chin in as if you are showing your double chin. Take it in and relax, in and relax. So I've kept my hand here as a marker so that I don't poke my chin out because again, that is something that we anyway do and it's damaging. So this is the marker. I'm gonna go behind and stop at my neutral. Behind and neutral, okay? We'll do five more. Dr. Sara, yeah? if you can just stop sharing the PPT and so that uh, the audience can just see you, we'll just put you on spotlight. Oh, is it that, um, as I already told you, like little... Yeah, okay. I have put you on spotlight. Or... Yeah, okay. And everyone, please requesting you all, uh, you know, to switch on your video, please. Yeah, I am looking through everyone now. <laughs> <laughs> Anshik, I would want you also to switch on your camera because oh, you're sure, the moderator. Sure, sure. why not? <laughs> it right. starts with okay. you, Anshik. Come on. Sure, sure. Why not? Why not? Yeah. So, uh, it, it, was it all not visible? The one I told you with head up and down, was it not visible or was it? Let's do it again. Let's okay. Start. okay. So, whenever you are sitting uh, in front of computer, so we have a tendency to lean forward, right? And it happens quite naturally. Like, no matter how many times I tell you to sit tall, you can't. And the only reason is that we are humans. We are not robot. You can't put your body on default, right? But what we can do is we can slowly and gradually get trained and get into the habit to correct our postures. So if this is the typical posture that we get into while we are working, let me move a little far and show you. Yeah. So if you have tendency to sit like this while working, so first of all, sit tall and upright, okay? And take your chin 
behind so all you have to do is just take the chin behind okay so if this position stresses the front part of your neck if this position puts the whole load of your head so your head can be 5 to 6 kg so ima imagine 5 to 6 kg of weight on the weight on these little muscles so as a result these muscles also get weak because they are continuously trying to hold you right and the gravity is also pulling you down so th this is one of the uh, major reason that these muscles get weak or tight a lot of people feel tight and stiffness so this is the reason so how you can reverse it sit tall take your chin in and reverse okay make sure you don't take your chin up okay we don't want you to do this and don't take your chin down as well you have to take the chin in okay i'm keeping my hand here as a marker so that i have to stop here okay chin in and relax do it let's do it keep your hand keep your hand here on the chest press it on the chest very good i can see a lot of people doing it now take the chin in and relax take the chin in relax let's do five okay One, make your double chin. Two, three, four, and last five. Very good, very good. Okay. The next one is again very easy one. Okay. Even if you are in a very important meeting, you can quickly do this ten chin tucks, right? Because it's not requiring. You don't need any equipment. Number one, you don't need any equipment. That is the uh, biggest burden and biggest reason that people give up on exercise. You don't have to go anywhere. right and you don't have to buy it every time like medicine correct so once you learn this you are you'll be able to reverse a lot of neck related and arm and shoulder related problem okay uh number 2 is to squeeze in your shoulder blade so just squeeze in your shoulder blades and come back okay squeeze in your shoulder blades and come back so if you see from the side i'm just taking my shoulder behind and relax and while doing this make sure you don't poke your chin out so neck in neutral sitting tall and upright just shoulder behind squeeze in as much as you can and relax okay let's do it all right squeeze and relax again squeeze and relax very good i can see a lot of you are doing and a few of you are not so let's do it okay 5 1 2 Three, four, and one so, last. Just a small question, Sara, Doctor Sara, in between. What's this exercise actually called? I mean, there's this particular name to this exercise. Yes, yes, yes. It's called scapular retraction. Scapular retraction. Okay. Retraction. Okay. So protraction. Protraction is when you are sitting and your shoulder becomes like this, rounded. Okay? okay. So this is protraction. A lot of people have this kind of posture. okay and just opposite is called retraction okay okay so this is what hap what happens when you're continuously working and then behind okay and then behind this is a very good exercise exercise for the young mothers as well this is a very good exercise for the teachers as well so i want you all to learn it because uh, th there must be your friends and family who might need it so shoulder behind and relax behind and relax very good next one so in the next one it's called slouch over correct so we we are usually already in the slouch position when we sit okay so this is how we usually sit slouch correct so try to sit tall first all right so now i'm sitting tall and this is the slouch position that we get into so over correct it so arch this part okay over correct over correct completely arch your back then relax okay don't hold your breath if you'll hold your breath you'll feel like you're you're getting cramps you're getting catches okay so keep on breathing normally just concentrate on your spine okay don't tighten your legs don't tighten your arm don't tighten your teeth okay just keep your body relax and arch 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 relax this one exercise will give you instant relief if you have Sit, you have to sit for you know in a stretch forty-five uh, to two hours of meeting. Okay, so one again, arch completely. Two again, three. Don't move your neck. You don't have to move your neck. 
you don't have to move your neck okay see i'm not moving my neck i'm just arching yeah arch and relax arch and relax okay see we humans are forward oriented forward oriented matlab whenever we are eating whenever we are talking whenever we are praying what do we do forward right whatever work we have to do even recreation even our hobbies it is something that we do in forward orientation right the stress is all one sided and it leads to various problems so what do we do arch right arch as much as you can relax then again arch as much as you can and relax okay now next one is something that helps a lot uh, for people who have upper back pain shoulder relate, related aches and pain okay so all you have to do here is take your hip all the way back so i'm taking my hip all the way back okay and then taking support and after taking support keep your hand behind your neck okay so not your head okay behind your neck so i'm not keeping my head here so not here not here here okay so just hold your neck okay keep your hand closer as much as you can okay not very tight not very tight okay then just take your elbows up as much as you can and then come back okay you can also do it by opening your shoulder completely and then go behind like this and then come back then again go behind and come back okay let's do it so uh, a few of you are moving your neck up so don't move your neck up so see my chin i'm not moving my chin at all because it is connected to my body it's going up so i'm not doing any additional neck movement okay so yeah so this is the correct movement if you are doing this then this is wrong okay so i don't want you to to uh, over extend your neck one of the easiest trick is to do correct movement is look something in front of you and while you're looking at it go behind as much as you can and then come back very good all right perfect perfect arch as much as you can and then relax slowly relax yeah okay now next one the last one okay so i told you there are five exercises which can reverse the five ill effects of prolonged sitting now this is the last one because we are sitting continuously right so what happens our spine is in the bent position okay this is something very interesting okay this is uh, something that we often notice in our clinic so if i'm standing like this and if i take this position what you will call you'll call it a bent position right you'll say that dr sara is bending correct now if i sit down like this what is happening the angle around this area is still like 90 degree correct this is again 90 degree now if i bend down like this if i bend down like this is it again 90 degree now think of people who say that doctor has asked me not to bend they don't bend they don't bend at all but they sit all day and they feel that even after taking precaution i'm not getting better and the doctor feels that my patient has done everything i think my patient has done like 100% and now it's time to go for surgery now what was the missing link sitting prolonged sitting so how we can reverse this ill effect of sitting okay so use the very same chair you don't need any equipment use the chair that you have if you are at home use your dining table use your kitchen slab use your washroom slab if it has space okay then keep your hand here okay so i've kept my hand here okay my legs slightly apart and then i'm leaning behind and then i'm coming back i'm leaning behind and then i'm coming back okay uh, miss menu your chair is too high so i would suggest you take another chair to do this exercise 
I'll show you the same exercise uh, with the wall also for those who have very, uh, you know, the headrest of the chair is very high. Okay, so now I'm I'm focusing on my elbow. Okay, I'm focusing on my elbow. I'm not focusing on my neck. So don't allow your neck to like hang completely. Okay, so I have full control on my leg. I'm looking in front, and then I'm coming back. One, two, three. Okay. It will be really great if you will get up and do it along with me. There are two benefits of doing it. You will know whether it's helping you or not, and you will ask me right away. And if you're facing any challenge, like th there's a height problem, or I'm not able to go to a range, or whatever I'm not able to do, you'll be able to ask me right away. Okay. So unless you do it, you will not know it. Let's do it. Okay. Mr. Ravi, you can have your uh, camera a little lower so we can see the chair and your, your you you know doing the exercise. Okay. Now one, hmm. two, yeah, three, and relax. Okay. Now for those who do not have anything to rest, right? So what you can do is. Keep your hand like this. This whole part will be supported to the wall like this. Okay, I'm standing at a distance and I'm just taking my hip forward. Okay, so I'm taking my hip forward. So this is causing the same kind of motion in my spine. All right. I hope this is easier for you. So again, I can't uh, emphasize enough of on this that these five exercises have the potential. to withdraw all the emotional financial and time okay burden that people do get because of aches and pains because of musculoskeletal and neuro problem they get due to prolonged sitting so all of these can be reversed with these exercises all right yeah over to you dr ashwini i'll share my screen again yeah All right, so you all can now sit back and relax. Okay, we are done with the exercise part. <laughs> Keep uh, your questions ready towards the end. We will have a question answer uh, Q and A round where uh, we'll be answering all your questions. So if any of you have faced any difficulty, any challenge, then we can discuss it, of course. Yeah, the next slide, please. uh can you spotlight the ppt uh dr ashwini it's already there i mean uh, okay will be able to see it yeah okay fine all right so now um you know dr sara wonderfully explained that how you should sit correctly okay now if we really go to the nitty gritties of it this is how exactly it should be okay uh your head the top of the screen should be at your eye level your uh, and the distance between your head to the screen should be your arm length distance you know again your back perfectly supported your elbows 90 degrees you know so that you don't uh, strain your wrist your hips knees and legs they are all at 90 90 okay 90 means an l shape but it looks very complicated isn't it like you know there is just too many things that you are supposed to take care of uh, just to maintain your erect posture next slide please okay also uh, another thing that uh, you know we have noticed you know since we are in to online physiotherapy treatment is when we tell our patients you know that you know you're supposed to sit straight or hey i'll be checking your sitting posture now you know because you know uh, since you have work related issues and you complain of pain during sitting the immediate reaction is you know they get very conscious and they are sitting properly so what happens is that when you're conscious you at least your body makes an effort to sit correctly but what happens you know when uh, you know your focus is lost or you get engrossed in you know your work there are certain deadlines there are meetings you know there are th things that need to be get done what happens during that time this is a typical posture that would happen you know 
if you are too busy in your work. So now how do we assess your posture? So that's when we use AI, that is artificial intelligence, to assess your posture during these instances. Because it's only then that a physiotherapist would be able to determine that, okay, this is what is happening. And these are the changes that they need to do. So next slide, please. So how do we do it? So we at Fit Health use artificial intelligence for assessing posture and you know uh, the post sitting posture that we just described in the slide uh, earlier. We, for the purpose of this webinar, we have recorded the entire assessment. So Dr. Sara, if you can go ahead and play the video. If you can play yeah, full screen. And can we have the audio, please? Can't hear. Not audible. Uh, I think uh, that, that there are some issues with, with this, this particular thing. So uh, uh, what we, we do, we'll, we'll share this uh, particular video along with the recording that we'll be you know, sharing uh, forward. Yeah. So I'll just talk about, you know, hey, it's me and Dr. Sara, you know, we could do it live. You know, we wanted to <laughs> relax, but yeah. looks like, you know, we will be doing a live one. So, uh, so go ahead and play it and I'll just tell you what it all is all about. <laughs> yeah. So the video can be there and Dr. Ashwini can do the voiceover. Yeah. Okay, let's play it. So this is how we would typically assess the workstation of our patients uh, during our online assessment. So we would start with the AI assessment for posture. As soon as I click on start assessment, you would see uh, certain uh, points getting superimposed on Dr. Sara's body. There you have it, okay? These are reference points. These will help to determine what is the posture like, okay? So now we'll see what happens when you adopt a poor posture. This is a relaxed posture, you know, you're chilling at home and you know, really, you know, doing your work in peace. Now notice what happens in this. So what we do, we take a screenshot for our explanation and also for our future monitoring of the patient. Then let's do another posture where, you know, you are at the edge of the seat, you know, really engrossed in something which the doctor, uh, which your boss is telling you maybe nervous a little bit. Uh, so that's the typical posture when you're at the edge of the seat. Now there is another posture where, you know, you sit all the way behind, but then you're leaning forward from your back. Again, nervous, anxious, you know, maybe uh, you're not able to see something from the screen. Uh, you know, it's the print is too small. The reasons could be any, but that's a forward bent posture. So now I've asked Dr. Sara that, you know, let's show people how, what is the ideal posture and how should then the reference points look like. So now she has taken a laptop stand and, you know, this is how the ideal posture should. Again, we would take a screenshot of that and we would keep it for our reference and also to explain to our patients that, look, this is what is happening. So here you have, you know, we use AI technology to assist our physiotherapists in their postural assessment part for their patients to help the patient as well as the physios understand better and treat accordingly. So this also gets very realistic because most of you are working from home and you will have a different sitting area, you will have a different sitting posture. And uh, these advices, which we saw in the previous slides, these ones, um, yeah. Let me go behind. Okay, now these. So these references, which gets too complicated and unrealistic. So based on, if we do AI assessment, when you are sitting using your own table chair, using the same area where you usually sit, 
you will slide. actually be able to uh, see the assessment the uh, of your own basically yeah so then you know we would capture the screenshots and we would show it to the patient and this is what the patient will also have a visual uh, reference of what he is supposed to do and what he's not supposed to do if you want to take it a step further we would tell their wives or we would tell their husbands or even a nagging mother in law that hey you know this is your job this is your opportunity to nag them i want them in this correct posture every time you see in the other three postures this is your golden pass all right so yeah jokes apart but this is the way you know we would try to encourage and reinforce the ideal sitting postures you know for our patients so next slide please uh, so we at fit health are going to offer free consultations to all pass care members and you can extend this offer to your friends and families just make sure when they are coming for the consultation they do tell us that you know hey we are referred from uh, past care uh, webinar so that you know we can uh, give them the free consultation benefit all right so now it's time for questions uh, let's see the chat box and uh, let's pick up few questions uh, yeah, just just before that, I would request you know Dr. Sara to you know if she can you know stop sharing the screen again so that we we can actually have all the participants. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. Yes. So uh, I think uh, we had one question already, which was answered by you in the chat box itself. Then we have one more question, and I'll just take it up with you. Is there any preventive diagnostic check for the current health of spine? so when we are talking about preventive diagnostic check you know it's not a test per se like you know uh, if you were to label a chai mri karlo a chai you know do an x-ray or something but when we are checking for the muscle health we want to check uh, a couple of things one is your posture one is your movements across all the joints the other one is what is the flexibility of your muscles and what is the strength of your muscles so all these four things would help us to assess where the problem lies also you know if because it's preventive if some of you all are interested into sports or some recreational activities like you know we've had like people who say hey i want to run the next mumbai marathon or somebody says you know i'm now i'm very conscious about my health i want to take care of my health i want to go to the gym or say I want to do, uh, you know, I want to play some kind of sports. So we would then assess their uh, body's uh, capacity to do those activities. It could be like standing in one leg, it could be jumping, kicking, you know, just those quick agile activities to just determine if you are ready to, you know, pursue these activities and you know if there are any issues you know maybe there are some aches and pains or there are some weaknesses or tightnesses then you know we could teach you certain exercises or certain things for that so that you can work on those and then resume those activities so we have a lot of patients you know uh they had these sciatica complaints uh once they get resolved and once they are nearing the end of our treatment, they will say, hey, I want to join some Zumba class. I want to uh, do some, uh, uh, you know, fitter or something like that. So then we would collaborate with their trainers as well, you know, because there are certain things they can do, certain things they cannot. So you cannot just randomly enroll yourself in any activities because when they are doing a group class, they have a certain standard exercises based on the assumption that the participant has no pain and you know can, has a basic level of fitness but if you are recovering or if you have recovered from an injury i would suggest that you know get yourself checked and don't push yourself you know understand the limitations of your body and accordingly work on you know improving your fitness Got it. Got it. So next I would question. Also, uh, yeah, sorry, yeah, I would ahead. like to add one more thing. Um, when it comes, because your question was very specific to the spine. So the spinal muscles, they have four functions. Flexibility, strength, endurance, and stability. So on all four, all 
all four uh, this grounds there are various tests which are done and these tests are not blood tests these tests are not scan but they are done through movements so when you connect on video call we as dr ashwini said you know standing on one leg it talks about the stability and if you are able to maintain the position for a longer period of time let's say for a minute or two then it uh, talks about your stability along with your stamina also then there are few tests uh, through which we check the other things also like uh, strength and flexibility so four different uh, uh, function of muscle and based on four function four different functional test yeah got it so uh, next question is by uh, by teetha so he is asking that uh, that during the last exercise i felt pain in my left neck and head like something was pulling how can i relieve that uh, tightness so teetha the exercise of bending backward was that the one so uh, i had requested you to adjust your camera so i could see the you performing the exercise but you know that was not possible during the session so if you can just show us right now we would just quickly uh, correct you uh, can you see uh, this at at this level at this level my chair uh, back rest is there at this level if just at this level i cannot hear you ma'am uh dr ashwini i think you, you are on 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 mute actually okay so mr teerth we need to see your spine we need to see your hips we need to see at what level the chair is with reference to your height so if you can just lower the camera uh, if you are using a laptop just lower the screen okay uh now which chair were you using uh so can you lower it a little bit more because we are still not able to see the chair yeah okay all right so mr teerth the chair is too low for you i think it's somewhere around your buttock area yeah yeah uh that height is too low for you it should be uh you know where you are putting your belt okay it should be at least up to that height all right okay so maybe that was the reason why you felt the strain okay all right so uh i hope that answers your question yeah. uh, regarding the handouts and the recording uh, they will be sent uh, to you via email as anshik has replied then there is another question does traditional cross leg sitting benefit the spine so if so can it be done in intervals and would it be recommended to a person who has recovered from cervical slip disc as it is advised on okay so the what happens with cross leg sitting is uh nowadays we are not using uh, we are not sitting in a cross legged position for a long time so what happens is you get tight around your buttocks your hip areas uh, your inner thigh even you know the back of the thigh hamstring and all these get tight and when they are tight suddenly when you try to adopt a cross leg sitting posture your back won't be uh, allowed to sit tall you know it will be like it's pulling you from one end okay so if you can see my hand so if this is the hip area my hip muscles are too tight it will pull the spine forward and what happens as a result my spine is curling it's not straight it cannot be straight because it, it there is too much of tightness around the hip area and it is this curling of the spine which is what strains your neck your back because what we recommend to patients when they have any issues of the spine is you try to maintain a correct posture of your spine which is straight now it's not the extreme also okay if you can bend so much maintain this no or if you can bend so much maintain this no so if this is your range you have to settle in the middle it's what we called as a neutral zone of the spine that is where 
the muscles, the tissues are functioning optimally. Okay. Now, going back to cross leg sitting. So now if it is tight and it's pulling me down, this strain is what is not advisable to your slip disc patient or, uh, you know, be it cervical or be it lumbar. So I hope that answers your question. So if you have individuals who want to sit cross-legged, please work on stretching your buttock muscles, your hip muscles, hamstrings, but please do it under guidance because what happens is typically if you want to stretch your hamstring, what you will do is you will bend forward, okay? Which may or may not be advisable if you have a slip disc issue, okay? So let's go to the next question. Also, uh, Ankita, I would like to add that uh, sitting cross leg is like ice cream. And when you have cold and cough, no ice cream, right? So you're not allowed to have ice creams when you have cold and cough. And once you recover completely, maybe after a week or two, then you can have ice creams, right? Ice cream or anything, anything cold. So whenever you have aches and pain, whenever uh, you are diagnosed with a condition, you're, you should not sit in cross leg position because it has potential to increase the problem. However, if you go through a rehab, if you go through uh, the bridge that I told you, so your cross leg sitting is towards fitness. And when you have a diagnosed problem, you need to bridge that gap with re uh, rehabilitation and therapeutic exercises as Dr. Ashwini said. Okay. So, uh, Ms. Minu, for your cervical issue, I would advise you to please, you know, avail the free consultation that we are offering to all past care members because we really need to go through your reports and really understand what exactly uh, is your issue. Okay, I hope that answers your question. Uh, it is said when you are suffering some kind of pain in particular body part, you should not exercise. Otherwise, it aggravates the pain. Is it true? Okay. So, um, it depends on the type of condition you have. 85% of back pains come under the category of mechanical back pain. That means there is a mechanical problem related to movement or postures. So, at the time of consult, when your physiotherapist assesses you and asks you to do certain things, she may ask you to do a certain movement a couple of times and then she will check, okay, let's see how your uh, painful uh, movements were. You know, let's see how your walking was. Has it improved by this particular movement? And if there is any change, then your back pain would be then categorized as mechanical low back pain because it is respond. It is changing. I wouldn't say responding. I would say it is changing to mechanical movements. So to answer to your question, exercise, whether it aggravates the pain or not, has to be first determined okay, and by a medical professional. And there are categories also. So I wouldn't suggest you to you know, try it out on your own. Please consult a medical professional for this because you, know, you have both the extremes. So we need to figure out what is your case and accordingly guide. All right. My mom is diagnosed with sciatica pain. So can we consult? Yes, sure, Miss Namisha. Please ask her to avail the service. Uh, is there a way I can connect forward at posture using exercise? Yes, Vinal, you can. Please approach us. What things should we take into account while buying a work chair if I am at my desk more than nine to 10 hours? Dr. Sarah, if you want to take that question. Yeah, so um, there are a few things which are like very important when you consider buying a chair. The first thing is because you have to be on that chair for like good eight to 10 hours or nine to 10 hours, as you, as you said, if, if it, it has a recliner and it has all the casters that you can roll, twist and turn, then it is something with not good for you. The only reason is that it reclines you and takes you in a bad posture. Rather, you can get up and take a posture break. When you're buying a chair, it must have an armrest so that you can keep your hand by the side. You should keep your hand by the side, okay? 
So armrest is the first thing which should have, right? The height of the chair, it should be in a way that when you're resting, when you when you take your hips all the way back, all the way back, your legs should not hang that time. Your, your foot should be completely planted on the floor. So that is how you'll understand the height. There are lots of chair which is adjustable. So make sure it, uh, it can be adjustable to a range when, when you take your hips all the way back, your foot should be planted on the floor. Then the next is armrest, as I told you. Then the third one is your backrest. So a very short backrest, like mine. This is not an ergonomic one, right? Because I don't sit as much as you have mentioned, nine to 10 hours. So this is very short. So it should be high, at least up to shoulder level. So the backrest should be up to shoulder level. Either it should not have the facility to recline. And if it allows you to recline, then it should have a lock for sure that when you're working, you can lock it in a particular uh, angle, like somewhere around 90 to 110, not more than that. 90 to 110 recline should be there. Then the chair should have a S shape, okay? So this S shape will give you a bump on the small of your back. So if I'm sitting here like this, okay? And my chair is completely flat, okay? So I'll show you with the help of a book. Yeah. So suppose the backrest of the chair is completely flat. Then my, this small of the back, this one, how do I show you? Small of the back, this area, this arch that we have, this arch, this will not get support, okay? We will, only the upper and the lower part will get support. So we need a chair which has a small arch, a cushion kind of structure which supports this part. And it should push you to be in this position. So if you remember, we did exercise also to correct, right? So the chair should have a S shape and the S, the concave should push you in this position, okay? This is the first and the most important thing other than the height of the chair. All right, I hope I'm clear. Do you want to add anything, Dr. Ashwini? Also, uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, when we uh, are discussing ergonomics with our patients, you know, they tell us, I have bought the best of the chair and everything. But you need to check uh, around the seat area. How is the curve? Sometimes, you know, they have a very peculiar curve or they have like these extreme, uh, I would say reverse K kind of a thing, you know. Those uh, back supports are not comfortable for you, okay? Because what happens is you would tend to arch a lot, you know, how Dr. Shara explained during that arch exercise is your buttocks would go behind, but just because how the backrest is made, like, you know, a reverse uh, K, you would arch at a higher area on your low back and that area would get strained unnecessary. So don't have these extreme arches, have something which will be more or less straight. Okay, even at the uh, buttock area. So it should be like an L shape rather than being more curved or you know some any weird shapes that you might see. Okay, let's check another. I am... I am suffering from severe shoulder pain. Anita R, I would uh, request you to please get in touch with us and avail the free consultation with us. We would want to see in detail what's going on. Okay, if you have any reports and all, you would want to discuss it in detail. Uh, what I think, kind of uh, Dr. Ashni, this this should be, uh, I mean, uh, our last question. Uh, yeah. For Samridhi Gupta, we are already, you know, over time. So this, this would be our you know, last question. Okay. So what kind of pillow one should use to avoid neck pain and sleep posture? I would take it together. Okay. So with reference to pillow while sleeping, we need to understand how do you sleep, okay? Some people, they sleep on their back. Those are the easiest one to correct, okay? Some of them are sleeping on their sides the others they sleep on their stomach so based on that we give them certain recommendations so if you're sleeping straight your pillow should so okay so if whatever is the curve of your neck okay 
the pillow should fill this gap and the low border of your pillow should should be just around your shoulders border okay you should not keep your pillow down because what will happen is then the pillow will push your shoulders forward and that's what we don't want okay so i have a big okay so imagine this is a book okay imagine this is as a pillow so it should be like this and not down fine sometimes what happens is we have individuals who have uh you know the arch a little bit more so for them what we tell them so even if you have taken a flat pillow you still feel that the the arch portion is still not getting supported what do you do there in that case you would take a a napkin okay you would roll it up and keep it in this gap oh i'm sorry this gap so this part is the one that needs support not your head if you keep it up your head will go forward like this not your shoulders because if you keep it near your shoulders your shoulders will go forward like this and this is exactly what we don't want you okay so that's for those who sleep on their back now for those who sleep on their side okay so imagine this is my side okay a thin pillow what is going to happen okay if my shoulder is so my shoulder is here so my pillow would be somewhere here right this gap ideally should be filled by the pillow otherwise i will sleep like this all the time okay now imagine sleeping 8 hours in this position you should be sleeping like this but you end up sleeping like this all the time you're going to strain your neck a lot okay so when you're sleeping on your side the thickness of the pillow should be to accommodate this distance between your shoulder am i clear between the tip of your shoulder to the base of your neck okay that is the distance that it should accommodate another common problem is where do you keep your hands do you keep them like this or what do you do if you keep them like this your, the weight of your head is going to press on the tissues and you know the nerves here so you will end up getting numbness tingling in your hands so that's also not right so then what do you do so now i'm just showing so your hand should be this way there okay and i have to use a book please excuse me okay so your hand should be like this it should not be up or under this pillow but it should be like this away outside the pillow and in this position got it was it clear this position okay now for those who sleep prone those are the ones that will typically end up straining their neck if possible please try to avoid sleeping in that posture or if you do end up sleeping then we don't want the extreme you know cranking of the neck in that posture okay because if you would sleep on the on your stomach you would sleep something like this and then you would end up straining your neck like that so in that case and also what happens is your shoulders would droop down all the time especially for ladies you know who have heavy chest because there is a gap they would the shoulder would automatically fall down and then you would have again some shoulder issues so if they are comfortable you could keep a pillow like this okay only for women i'm talking about because you know to accommodate for the chest area you would you can then keep a pillow here to ensure that your shoulders don't droop down and you don't go into this posture okay now all said and done you know we are not robots so even if you sleep in a one posture there are chances that you can change so what we can do best is whenever you are alert whenever you get up at night you know to use the washroom or something like that it's only during those alert times that you adopt these correct postures so that you are ensuring that the stresses to your uh, spine are minimal okay i hope this was a interesting lecture for all of y'all 
and I hope we have covered all the questions. Uh, Anshik, are there any more questions? No, I think uh, the last one was answer, answered by Dr. Sarah on, in the chat, chat box itself. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, uh, thanks a lot, Dr. Ashini and Dr. Sarah for your time and, you know, uh, helping our uh, the past care community for, you know, uh, hosting this wonderful session and, you know, taking your time from your busy schedule. And thanks a lot, every, everyone, for joining in. Uh, we hope to, you know, see you once again. I'll be, I'll be, we'll be keep, uh, you know, you, you know, that we keep on hosting these wellness sessions for our community and hope to see you again. Thanks a lot, Dr. Ashwini. Thanks a lot, Dr. Sara, for you know being the being a very good uh, orator here, helping us out. And uh, guys, for you, uh, we'll be sending out one feedback mail uh, to you. Do share your feedback, and if possible, do you know uh, do make a post on LinkedIn or on on, on Twitter, uh, appreciating past care as well as Vitel. So we you know look forward to host you once again uh, in our upcoming wellness session. Thank you so much, Tirta, and thank you so much, everyone, uh, you know, for those kind words. And uh, I hope we have some of you who have serious pains, you know, uh, avail the opportunity of the consult and see us, you know, one-on-one -on -one, uh, for consultation. Apart from thank that, we will be sharing the recording, uh, the, the, uh, those handouts, I guess, for the uh, Argo break exercise as well as the uh, the thing the the past care you know the free consultation thing all right all right thanks a lot okay thanks thank you everyone have a great day have a great bye day. okay bye bye